Hello everybody. So I'm coming to you again with another video. This is video number two. I wanted to talk about notary supplies. So you've applied for your commission. Um, you've gotten your commission, right? Congratulations. Now you are a notary, but you need tools to be able to perform your duties, right? So I'm just going to talk about notary supplies tonight. So one of the most important things you're going to need is a bag. I have a notary bag here. Okay. Let me scoot back some so you can see. This is my notary bag. Okay. And it has a shoulder strap and it has these shorter straps here. On each side, I have a holder where I can put a bottle, um, umbrella, I have a little nice compartment on the outside here, a zipper, has some nice compartments there, and um, oh, let me move this over, sorry, has a zipper here, let me take this out, it's a really functional bag. I love this bag. I've had this bag since I started. I did have a different bag and I changed it out. Or this one, because this one was just more functional, like I said. There's like a little space here. So, you can see that. Sometimes I'll throw my phone or something in there. And then I have the inner part here. It can fit an iPad, it can fit a 17 inch laptop. Then it has some zippers and compartments in here. Then in the back, it's a little part for if you are going out of town and you're using your bag, or if you have one of those rolling carts, you can slide this over the handle. So I love this bag. Okay. I got this bag off of Amazon where I get most of my stuff for notary. Now, you're also going to need a stamp. Now, of course, if you didn't go through the National um, Notary Associations that I listed in the first video, then that means that you're in need of a stamp because usually with those packages that you order from them, it comes with a stamp already. So the different types of stamps you can have is a rectangular stamp, you can have a round stamp, you can even have an embosser stamp, which has that really nice imprintable one where it has the original stamp on there that everybody loves because it's the older traditional way that people used to notarize documents well. Unfortunately, in a lot of places, the embosser is not good or I won't say not good, it's not used by itself, okay? A lot of states, majority of the states have adopted the ink stamper now. So, sorry guys. So, but I'm going to show you both because I have both. I don't have a round stamper, but I do have um, a rectangle stamp and I do have an embosser. So I'm going to share them both with you so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first one I'm going to show you is the embosser. So I have a handheld embosser here. Really pretty cool. And what you do is you put it on the paper. Let me unlock it. Let me find some paper to stamp for you guys. Um, I'll use this piece of paper here. You would just put your stamper right here. And I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, yes, you can embossed now they sell the stamper because if you use this if you notice you can't really see it and if somebody was to need to make a copy of the document that you embossed they're not going to be able to see that imprint either once they make a copy so they have the ink stampers that you can put on the embossing after you've done it that's my embosser I'm gonna lock this back now I got this off of Amazon as well it was $19.99, I want to say. Okay. Let 
now I'm going to show you guys the ink stamper. So like I said, when you use the embosser, you have to use the ink stamper in conjunction with it. You can't use the embosser by itself. You can use the ink stamper by itself though. Okay. So I have two different size notary stamps. Okay. Here's the traditional one, and this is called the mini. The reason why I have two, I know you're asking, because there are some documents where you cannot attach a loose certificate. And I'll go over certificates and notarizations in another video. Sometimes you can't attach a loose certificate and you have to work with the space that is given for you. Well, in some instances, you will come across documents where that notary space for your seal is just not big enough. But you got to find a way to get your stamp on there because once you stamp the dot, when you stamp the document, it cannot cover any other wording on the paper or any images or anything for that matter. It has to be in a space free from anything else. It has to be like a clear white space. So I got the mini stamper to help me in those situations and it works perfectly. So those are your stamps or for another word that they use our notary seal. Next, you need a journal. Okay. Now they have the traditional journal where it has um, all of those smaller lines going across two pages at a time and they have different rows. Some of them, I think it's a row of eight. Um, you can use those obviously, but in some states you're able to use whatever type of journal you want. Now there are some states that restricts you from using any type of journal. You have to use the traditional journal. Okay. I don't have a traditional journal. I'm in a state where it's not required. Okay. So I have my own journal that I made myself. It's this journal here. Okay. This is one that I created um, and it is available on my website if you're interested. Now let me show you how it looks. This is the inside. Here's a sample page of it here. Okay. Why did I opt to make my own journal? Because there were some journals that I was coming across where the design just didn't fit my needs. Either it was designed where it had way too much going on on the page. Sometimes um, I came across some that had really small spaces. I am not the best writer and I'm not good at writing really small either. And then you have some that just didn't have enough information on a page for me. So I decided to make my own once I did my research and found that I could. Okay. This is something that you have to look up on your own if that's the route you decide to go. Make sure it's allowed in your state first and foremost. Okay. But you need a journal. You should have a journal because you should want to record all of the notarizations that you do because you never know when you have to prove your notarization in court. Okay. Now, they have um, traditional journals. Like I said, they have journals where it's two entries to a page. They have some that's one entry to a page like mine's is. And then they have the signing agent journal, which is a totally different journal. And it's for those notaries who also do loan signings. Okay. Now, another supply that you want to have in your bag is loose certificates. Okay. Why do you want to have loose certificates? You want to have copies of those certificates because sometimes you're going to be asked to notarize a document that does not have any notarial wording on it. Okay. So I'm going to show you the, an example of a loose certificate. I can get it out of my folder. I keep a folder. Got this from the Dollar Tree and it has loose certificates in it. This is called a loose certificate. It has notarial wording on it. And this is what you would have to attach to a document that's, that does not have notarial wording on it. Okay. You would fill it out accordingly. And then you would stamp the document that does not have notarial wording on it. You either stamp it saying see attached certificate or you can stamp it. I mean, you can write it on there saying see attached certificate and then have that attached certificate. 
I'm trying to find my uh, my stamp so I can show you guys that I have a lot of stamps. <laughs> so I have this stamp here. See a test certificate. I will stamp the document that I am attaching the loose certificate to. So they'll know a loose certificate belongs to that document. Okay. Also in this folder, I ha I keep a, a copy of my commission, my bond, and my um, E&O, which is errors and omissions insurance. And I also keep a copy of my background check in case it's ever requested of me. I have a copy on me. Now, I wanted to show you guys, they also have loose certificate stamps. Now, I have come across a couple of notarizations where a loose certificate was not permitted to be used. Okay, so I know you're thinking like, okay, well, what do you do? Well, you just stamp it on there. These are my notary certificate stamps. Okay. I purchased them from all state notary supplies. And I have not got a chance to use them yet, but they do work. I've tried them. Tested them out, which you should always do. Always test out your equipment beforehand because when it's time to work and use them, you want to make sure they're going to work. All right, so those are certificates. You definitely want to have copies in your bag or stamps in your bag, whichever route you choose. Now, pens. You want to have pens, okay? Black and blue. Why both? Because some documents will specify on there what color ink they prefer for you to use on the document, okay? So I carry black and blue. And I went the extra route to have my own pens made with my business name on there. And it also has my contact information. Usually when I do a notarization, I don't take pens back, especially with the COVID. So I make sure I keep pens on me black and blue. And when I'm going to do a notarization, I give this person the pen with my information on it and I tell them to keep it afterwards, okay? You can also go to the Dollar Tree and just get a bunch of pens and just give them away. Don't take the pens back. Just let the person have the pen after the notarization, okay? A mini stapler is another thing that may come in handy. Now, some documents do not allow you to staple Okay, so you may have to use paper clips, but that's okay. Have both on you. Dollar Tree sells mini staplers with staples. And next, like I said, paper clips. Definitely keep um, all size paper clips on you as well. Sticky notes. Sticky notes are great to have, especially if you're out and say you're coming from a notarization or you're going to a notary appointment. Somebody calls you and they need you. You want to be able to have something to write down, write on. So you're going to have pens. You already got your sticky notes, um, even a, um, a notepad. But you want to write the information down, you know, as far as address, contact information. So that way you can go back to it after your appointment and you will be able to, you know, have easy access to that information. Folders. Like I said, Dollar Tree has these folders. They even have sheet protectors. I keep everything in the sheet protector in my folder, especially my certificates here and all of my um, information. Another thing that you may need is a fingerprint anchor. Now, keep in mind, some states don't allow you to record fingerprints in your journal, okay? Remember, every state is different. I'm in Florida. There are no restrictions for that. So, in my journal, I collect a right thumbprint. Let me show you my anchor. Here's my fingerprint pad. Got it off the Dollar Tree. I like this fingerprint pad because you could just rub it off. It's just oil, so it doesn't stain or anything like that. All right. The next thing that you want to have on you is a receipt book. Now, this new day and age, you can text message receipts, but some of my clients are older and they have like the flip phone, so I can't text them a receipt. So you want to have a receipt book, good old fashioned receipt book. 
I got my receipt book at Dollar Tree. Here it is. And it has the carbon copy so that your customer can get the white copy and you keep the yellow. One dollar. And there's 40 receipts in there. And I've only written, I think, maybe five receipts in this book so far. So it goes a long way. Hand sanitizer. You want to definitely keep hand sanitizer in your bag, guys. I hand sanitize before and after my appointments. Preferably in the customer's face so that they know I am practicing good hygiene in between my customers. Gives them that bit of confidence that they need knowing that um, when to that they need to have when they're working with you. I'm sorry if I'm getting some tired. Clipboard. You want to definitely have a clipboard. For those of you who don't have an office and are mobile like me, the clipboard comes in handy because sometimes I'm notarizing for people in a parking lot, you know? I keep two on me. Okay? Because you never know when you're going to need one. And I also got these at Dollar Tree. Now, a lot of people, they are, you know, raving about having badges and name tags. I have both. I have a badge and a name tag. Why do I have both? I am not only a notary public, I'm also a notary signing agent. It's really the same thing. They both do the same thing, but you know, in the notary world, they like to give different titles for these things. So that's what I'm gonna use. Now, um, when I am doing loan signings, I like to represent myself, okay? When I'm not doing loan signings, I like to represent my business. So that's the reason why I have both. I have the name tag and I have the name badge. And I'm looking for my name badge, guys. Give me just a second. Okay, here it goes. Uh, here's my name tag, okay? I made it on Zazzle.com and I have this retractable ID holder that I also got at Dollar Tree. You also want to have mask. Obviously for this time in history, this is what we need when we are working with people. I have two. I got them customized at Vistaprint, okay? So this one just says Notary Public. This one has my older logo on it because I'm picky, I'm always changing things up. So I have two. And I keep those in my bag. Now, another thing that's really important, it's not a supplies, but it is a necessity. Your attire, okay? What I wear to every notary appointment is a polo shirt and slacks, okay? Now, I'm in Florida, so I also, <clears throat> excuse me, am able to perform um, marriages. I'm able to do um, marriage ceremonies, you know, solemnize marriage, officiate, however you don't want to refer to it. Hold on just a second. I dress up for those occasions, obviously, because it's a very dressy occasion. I usually ask the bride and groom, you know, what do they prefer for me to wear as far as colors and things like that. But for regular appointments, for loan signings and general notary, I just wear a polo shirt that I have my logo embroidered in, which you probably see here, my logo. And um, I have some really nice, comfortable slacks that I wear, and I wear some loafers, and I wear that to all of those appointments. And last but not least, a phone. Some people have... Um, Google Voice, and some people purchase another phone, okay? You can do either or. If you want to, if you prefer to just keep your regular phone, excuse me, you can purchase, I'm not purchase, you can use Google Voice as a free option. You, you get a Google, free Google number and you can forward that number to your personal phone. And the way to do it is, so that you know when people are calling, you can turn off the screening option, okay? Because that Google Voice does have that. Um, 
what you could do is save your Google Voice number in your phone. Okay? Save the Google Voice number in your phone. And set in your settings for your when your phone rings that your Google Voice number will show and not the person's number who's calling. That way, if your Google Voice number is ringing, it'll show on your phone that it's your business number ringing. So you will answer it accordingly. Usually I'll answer it as my business name. Bailey's Notary Services. This is Bergeau. How can I help you? Okay. So that is all I have. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that you can be notified of all of my other future videos. And I will absolutely leave those links that I mentioned in this video in the description for you to use. Okay. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.